but it's just that strong conviction of believing in something more than anything. You just need to believe in the project that you're doing. You just need to believe in the business and that will enable you to go an extra mile. But the reason why I was doing it was greater than the process of hardship while I was doing that, right? So, and I knew that if I can get the messaging and the story right, it doesn't matter what my life is. From Kona Juden to Pia, I mean, I'm seeing this with Seed. I'm very similar to Melis with Seed, formerly known as Razi Matonsel. I'm here to show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth as a street culture, but also formalize a street hustle. Kona Juden to Pia, special edition brought to you by the good folks at Samsung. I told you, comment, hashtag air cream. I really got something for you. Today we have Salamu Tavisa, aka the magic man, the full man. Donna Sekasi, a cinematographer, director, game changer, uh, the first to give us the S24 Ultra movie. How does it feel to be you today? Hey. Hola, my sister. Shout out to my brother. I'm going to say, 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 yeah, so my talent in Dalla, my white talent is that. Standard. 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 <laughs> Good man. Uh, I think the most interesting part where most people also get introduced to you is when you're on the journey to shoot your first show for. Mm. What was that journey like? Because a lot of young creatives who watch our platform and support our platform also on that journey where, like, I want to create this thing. I've had this dream and this moment. And I'm building up to make this one project. Mm. What would you say was the biggest thing that kept you going at that moment? Uh, so, we'll be talking about Zion, right? Yes. Celebration of spirituality and religion. I think it's, for me, it's actually a lifelong project, bro. You know, that's why now I'm doing other things that are inspired by the actual form, whether it's clothing or the stuff that we're gonna tap into after this. But it's just that strong conviction of believing in something more than anything you just need to believe in the project that you're doing you just need to believe in the business and that will enable you to go an extra mile you know mm-hmm. so coming from scala i've always wanted to do this project it's it's something that i've always wanted to do and i went to scala i started working at um bomb productions um, which I think also really shaped the way I do my films today in terms of the messaging and representation, right? Um, and then straight after that, I felt compelled and ready enough to start my own journey. And that process actually helped me realize we I can do this thing, you know, because that's when some films started. That's when I developed this entrepreneurial spirit in me, you know, that's when I started learning that I can be a creative and a businessman as well. Because if you remember 2021, I did my first show screening, mm. which was photography and film, premiering the film. Um, and that day, I think that day really changed my life. Then I just believed in myself that I can do this thing. Mm. Mm. What was that like? Because we see you for good, was it four, three, four years? Mm. You're taking these pictures, you're posting these snippets, yeah. and then everyone's like, yeah, when is it coming out? <laughs> What's that moment like when things don't work out at the speed you'd like them to work out? Oof. Oh, bro, I was floating that day. I was really floating. Like, I just couldn't believe. Um, but the reason why I was doing it was greater than the process of hardship while I was doing that, right? So, and I knew that if I can get the messaging and the story right, it doesn't matter what medium I shot it at. Because it shot with the phone, my camera, like Sony, Canon, Fuji, anything that I could access at the time, I used it. But the story still stands, you know, and I didn't have this burden of wanting to make it the most, I don't know, cinematic piece, because I couldn't then, right? But I just knew that with this type of story and this message, and it's the most important thing that needs to come out out of the piece. Mm. What goes into creating a piece? Because all of, all of us, we're like, yeah, one day we'll shoot it here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll have a, a, something that's amazing with this person. These are the characters I have in my head. But what would you say for like aspiring writers, aspiring mm. filmmakers? Mm. Say, yo, 
these are the things that go into a story. Yeah. First, I think establish why you want to do the piece, the reason why you want to tell the story, right? And for me, the best writers are inspired by their environment, their challenges, their joy, you know? Um, starting from that point, I think will give you an honest piece that whatever outcomes come out of that piece, you will be happy with the outcome, right? Mm -hmm. You would be proud of what you did because it's your story. It's something that you want to tell. And script writing, you, you ideate. Um, I don't like working in isolation. I have a group of friends that I know for sure I trust their opinion. I know how they see me, but I know how I see myself. I know where I'm headed. But I can send some stuff. I can send edit drafts. I can send scripts. Um, that I trust that they're gonna give me like a, an honest opinion about that. You write the script, you workshop it with your friends, or you workshop it with your business partners, whoever. If it's a commercial, you work. If, if it's a, what is this, a demo commercial, so you can workshop it with people that you want to be working with, right? And um, you go into pre-production, and pre-productions are different from commercials and maybe indie films or films with kids that are coming from school, right? But that's, I think for me, that's also such an important um, stage where you need to be then aware of the reality of what you want to do, but still not keeping yourself to just that, right? Allowing the process to be. You go in that, you rake your locations, you find your casting, um, you keep, ed you keep editing the script. Don't be based on just that one particular script. You keep editing. You find your lead, you talk to them. How do they feel about the, the piece, the story? Do they see themselves in it? How would they react to the scenes that you have? That also informs you um, more about their story because she will be or he will be delivering it. And you need that comfort also from this person, right? So, you work on that, you work on your schedule, you set realistic dates, you give yourself more prep time because you're not pressured, right? It's a passion project. Um, and yeah, you shoot, shoot day, shoot day. You can't change the dates, you just go. In building all of this, you then moved to telling stories by you for. Yeah. What was that journey like? And why was it important for you to shoot a film at that stage? Because uh, you've just done this whole big thing. You had all of us come through, you had a dinner, mm. you had everyone attend, you had everyone actually purchased to be there because it wasn't, hey, I'm just screening a thing. You said, yo, please pay to support this thing. And people supported you. In that moment, people would think you'd scale mm. and want to go bigger. Mm. And you decided, no, go to my phone now mm. to tell me stories. I just decided to be, to find a device that will bring me as much closer as possible to reality. I think your device, right, is our home in my she phone. Our she phone only. That's the best storyteller that you can have, right? That's the best device you can have to tell a story. You, wherever you are, there's something happening around you, around your community, around your friends, in a vacation, and there's this one thing that is always with you that you can't forget. Um, and then with me really trying to be honest about my stories and authentic, um, I always found myself with the phone mm -hmm. and I couldn't go and set up things and find cameras and, 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 but I just decided, let me just capture this moment with my phone, you know? And I think that also helped me realize that there's a distinction between recording with your phone and the camera yeah so it's so comforting for someone you can even go closer to their face with your phone right whether it's a stranger or whoever and you can even say like oh, i'm so friendly on your whatsapp you know and then you actually send it two minutes after you want to see your profile picture mm. because of this honest interaction that happened and you also need to build trust with your with the person that you're engaging with right 
And I was I actually finished shooting our Samsung Peaks yesterday, short form. And I just loved how it gave me room to move, however, right? Um, the, the, the tininess of the phone allowed me to angle it however I wanted to angle it. But it also allowed for honest reactions between my, my two characters. Like sometimes I would give um, um, my assistant a form, just go straight into the character. Or even Biro, our cast. She would record her grandmother with a phone, you know, and it's it's so beautiful. It's not they even forget that you're in a phone set because you're doing this with this device that everyone is using every day. It's not intimidating at all. How important is the right device and when do you know it's the right device? Again, it's the story that you're trying to tell, which would lead you to the device that you need to use, you yeah. know. So for me Nebelas because I also love documentary. I think I really love documentary. And I want to get honest moments in documentaries. I want to engage with my people as close as, and as intimate as possible. So my phone, it allows me that, right? And it's a conversation starter because my shiny phone, we engage, we change contacts. And then because I love, because if I, I do a video with 30 different people, those are 30 different stories. I can then engage with them at the end, right? We can do a documentary on each, right? So, yeah, I think it allows me to, to engage with people like that. Yeah, you've been using Samsung devices for a while. Mm. What said this Galaxy Ultra S24 about? Sheesh! Because now it's like, we keep talking about this AI. What is this Galaxy AI? For a filmmaker like yourself, someone who's trying to tell these honest stories. Yeah. Um, yo, yeah, it's, it's been a two year journey to where we are now, which I would like to thank for Zia actually for um, trusting and letting the process be, right? Because we wanted to do it right. Um, I don't think I'm one person that just likes taking, I love giving as well, right? When I'm giving to everyone and all people, I love to write my own story within what we're trying to do. So, um, and as a purist myself, I, I enjoy writing the stories myself. I enjoy putting treatments together myself. I enjoy using real references, you know. Um, and now starting to ease into AI, right, and what that can afford us. Um, I'm starting to un understand that it's, it's something that helps us confront our challenges as human beings, right? Whatever, and challenges can be subjective, right? If you have a problem of writing, um, there's tools, um, there's a creative gallery that can help you with that, right? And if you're finding challenges on um, doing these things, you can find tools like Galaxy AI, right? It can help you access everything and confront all your challenges that you, you might have. Mm. On this podcast, we speak a lot about creative entrepreneurship, most importantly, the obstacles that face young creatives, right? Because at some stage, me and you were also just talking about, like, you know, one day in Funa, mm -hmm. one day this is what I wish, and these are the outcomes mm -hmm. I want to do. And then we were fortunate enough because of the connections and relationships we built mm -hmm. to meet people who can help us and guide us in certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for you to come to this campaign of AI Create, where you'll be workshopping your phone, showcasing your phone, and also finally interacting with some of your audience members who recently followed you? Yeah, um, I think it's a it's a beautiful platform, Bana, to be honest with you. And again, the reason behind it, um, you know, stole my heart. The reason behind it gave me a reason to want to participate in this level. Um, and I love engaging with my people. I'm very accessible online. I think it's now beautiful to see someone do this thing professionally with the phone because also for me it's been a journey that I've been chasing to actually get to a point where I can shoot a short form using a device, right? And I think conversation, the conversations we'll be having when I'm primering, doing a master class, sharing more about the process um, would be helpful for someone that is following my journey. Mm. 
the most beautiful thing about this experience with AI Create is the mere fact that it's an exclusive screening of this. So if you comment hashtag AI Create, hashtag with Galaxy, hashtag Konejit and Dupier, hashtag Sun, I really need to be there, hashtag, hashtag, as much as you can say about what you do with the power of AI, Galaxy AI specifically, you don't know what it might do for you, but what do you think people can really take away that you learned the most about the AI within the shooting of your phone? Yeah, um, I was lucky that I've experienced different um, upgrades yeah. on the phones because we've been working for two years been family. now, been family. Um, but this generative AI edit in particular, I think it cleans the environment better. You know, mm. um, you'll see how we did it on Does this do it like on photo only or video as well? It do, does it on photo only, okay, which cool. I enjoyed so much. And <laughs> if you want to talk about business, you can literally just shoot stuff around and submit your stuff right now to your client because mm. you can literally edit stuff out. You can even add stuff in on the picture. You know, so which, storyboarding was fun. Storyboarding was crazy. I'll show you some images. I'll yeah. send you some images so you can see how we actually did the process. And creating this masterclass workshop, what actually went into creating this form? And why specifically this form is so groundbreaking for you? Mm. Um, I'll just share how, how we started, right? So, again, it's been an ongoing process. I had a lot of ideas that I wanted to implement. Um, but this story in particular, crazy enough that the cast names um, my mom's name and my niece's name, um, because it's a story of generations brought together by this one device to bridge the generation gap, right? Uh, and as much as it's about them, but it's also a human story that I think can be brought into light in this way that we're doing it. And I started writing that idea. Like I said, I don't work in isolation. I spoke to my friends about it. I spoke to people at Samsung about it. They really loved it. And we workshopped it. We found a cast, man, um, suitable people. Um, and <laughs> this other day on set, uh, when we were shooting some moments, some skills for the pictures. My family came through to me. I wanted Neo from my from my film to come meet Neo who inspired this character. Yeah. Because I could also see my mom. So my mom has been a mom of different generations, right? But she's she can she can maneuver through all these generations. She's a TikTok mom now. And the first one is like in the late eighties, right? So that that story just inspired me to why not pursue this more, you know, because I think it's a, it's a more of a personal story for me. And then it happened, wrote it, and we did castings. Um, we picked our cast. We found location. It's based in, it's, um, we shot in Soweto, Good Deep Proof. Um, and we were shooting just shot yesterday and everything really went well. Mm. What made the device of choice so specific for this phone? Mm. Because like, it's this Galaxy AI power, what's that thing that made you say, okay, cool, we're using this feature in this phone? Yeah. Because I know Circle to Search has been something that a lot of people have loved about the yeah. Galaxy power. Yeah. So you can actually search this thing in real time yeah. and figure it out yeah. and keep going. Mm. For the phone, what were the features within this? Um, most the most dominating feature in our form is the photo assist. Um, I don't wanna share too much about the story because it has a, a suspense until the reveal. But we use the photo assist to help Ugo go surprise um at the end. So I think it's such a, a beautiful feature that can that can bridge uh, the generation gap, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we use that. Mm -hmm. You're a storyteller. Mm. You make films, you make commercials. Mm -hmm. How do you then package all that? Because at the end of the day, you're sure. How do I say, okay, this, this I can sell to this thing to make this ad? <laughs> because this is a story you grew up with. You're saying this is a story inspired by your mother. Yeah. How do you then package these things for commercials, commercial use? Um. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I don't know. 
Um, one thing I'll, I'll mention, and I'll be honest with you, is I don't create based on commercial. I create based on a feeling and a story that needs to be told. But it just also happens that I do work with brands, right? And they see value in what I can bring, you know? Um, I don't see, I don't, I don't do setups. I just live my life the way I'm supposed to and tell stories that, that I think for sure needs to be represented somehow. And then the commercial aspect of it finds me. Mm. Mm. You do Zion, you create Zion necessity. Mm -hmm. What's that transition like to say, we did the phone, now we do the clothes, yeah. now we're doing the shoes, now yeah. we're doing this. Yeah. How's that been? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love, I love that process. I love building, Lars and Pan. I love building. Um, and like I said, we, I try so much to, because this is, for me, it's my legacy project, right? And it's something that's going to go on forever because um, I believe so much in that type of messaging. And I think the film then expands itself beyond just the, the medium, the film format. And I wanted to continue the same messaging using clothing, using um, cutlery, because we're working on some stuff, using everything that is accessible and tangible. Imagine a plate that is written we thank God for the food that we are about to receive, right? I think it's a constant reminder that there's this one person that we always need to obey and pray to, you know? Mm. So I think, yeah, the brand itself is a representation of that. And it does also, again, it doesn't feel like a commercial, even when we sell it. It just feels like us telling the story. Um, and now we want to do different medium formats, mm. telling the same story. These different medium formats, they grow the audience. Do we ever get a Zion Part 2? Or yeah. Zion the feature film? <laughs> what do you expect in the future? Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely working on some things, a series, um, that goes into all these different elements that we've captured in the documentary. So hopefully someone is listening and will help us with this because I also wanted to do it in a way that I still have my creative freedom to tell the story that we have loved to, but I'm obviously open to collaborate somehow. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, you create these forms. How feasible is creating forms as an independent creator? Because Zana Forms is a separate company mm -hmm. that's doing it independently. There's no back work. It's just you are creating this because you want to tell the story. Mm -hmm. How feasible is it for young creators to also pursue this career field of mm -hmm. creating forms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, it's so worth it. I, I think maybe this is what I also wanted to say, Uti. Entrepreneurship shouldn't just be about ownership. It needs to be a mindset, you know. You can you can still be entrepreneurial in how you at your job, at your nine to five job, right? Um, it's not entirely about hey, I'm hugging a hundred percent, but it's about, about finding partners that are right for the direction that you're heading towards. In collaboration, how have you made it easier for you to collaborate with other people? Because a lot of us, we have this ish. Mama, we Susana. We Susana, so to so to. And they told us, please get done. We just need to reach out. You know? What would you say other ways to reach out? Maybe I'm a kid, I'm a wardrobe stylist, and I've been seeing what you're doing with your mm. forms, and mm. personally, I'd like to interact with it. Mm. How can I reach you? Because mm. a lot of people also do have ideas for your idea. Mm. Yeah. Which, which I would love to which I'd love to hear, hence I'm saying I'm very accessible and open to collaborate, right? And it depends on what you need. And I think when you're looking for a mentor or someone to coach you or someone just to work with, you need to be at an alignment of some sort. You need to know that you're going to give in more, you know, you're going you're gonna to want to learn more as well. You're going to want to be in their journey as well. You know, so I think just send a DM, man. Send a DM, send an email. Keep pursuing, like show, send the ideas, engage with the person that you want to interact with or work with. Um, yeah. What do you want to leave? <laughs> Yo, Fana. Um, 
you know, must move Everyone has their own mission. Abanye, by Kumbi Pastor, Abanye, of his care with mission. Abanye, by sharing in Yamas, which is a vision, you know. Um, as long as we will say friendly and pay the bill, bro. Whatever you need to do, you need to do it, you know. Um, it's not everyone that's gonna put the food on the table. So you need to really work towards your goals, you know. No one will speak, spoon feed you. No one will give you everything that you need. Um, a business itself is also not the easiest thing to do. Um, and be open to let people advise you. Be open to listen. Be open to work for free, you know. Be open to just understanding that this is the journey as well. It's so crazy that when you're looking, everything in hindsight is like, it's like a science, you know, it's like, I, sh I should have gave him more money, or I should have rather asked this, you know, uh, which you don't want to feel like that. So just give in your 100% every day, pay that bill with money. Mm. It's crazy, I feel like that about like school holistically, because the older you get, the more you realize like, Actually, have a double down. Yeah, I'm told. We could have been a bit further, yeah, and a bit faster. Yeah, I'm told. Yeah, yeah. It's like what's crazy is more is scale. More is scale. No, your performance will be crazy. Yeah. Look at you know, like only you know, like time and media. It's classy. Yeah, the ones were first year. Yeah, I'm told. Yeah. The most focused. Like I used to. <laughs> I didn't actually tell you how I started this thing. Maybe you will start the interview like this. Eh? So, when I was doing grade 10 in Sugar and Tango Secondary School, a PV. Sugars. Sugars, sure. Uh, I see a different UK in this one morning. And I was late and fun. I'm in the class scene and I, it was social science. I'm in the class scene. And one person, because I was posting my photograph on Facebook fairly back then, I was yeah. see shooting around the class. And one person was like, why would you more? Because there were photographers who assembly, you know, saying um, they're going to take school pictures, you know, and some people joined them. Why are you not here? And then I went to say, I was like, say, who are the photographers? But hey, can I give you my phone? I was like, hey, no, yes, we are going to find out Facebook agents, like, so inspiring. Hey. And then I went to the hall. When I got there, I found they were really like taking um out yeah their school pictures right, and I joined the group, um and then they took us on an internship. Uh, we went to shoot at Umakans now, Basby bags as well, and that was so beautiful because I came back. I know I came back from that weekend. I was like, yeah, this thing is. I want to do this. This is me, you know. I've always wanted to do it. I think my family, we have a lot of pictures in our, we love pictures in Jimmy, but as a profession, I saw it there. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to tell my mom that after school, I'm going to go get a form. Then I went to go study um, AUJ. I finished there. And I found this fun at Bomb Productions, working under Bradeza Mashazi. R.I.P. Yeah, rest in peace, man. Um, I, I think I also took from his own page, from his own book. Uh, and I was working with amazing directors as well, like Stefina Zwani, Justice Mukele, Ernest Ngozi, Idu, and um, the research team that are I'll, I'll forever love and I'm grateful for that opportunity because it then gave me life after that. It showed me the discipline of the industry. It showed me how I need to maneuver, you know, it showed me how to do treatments, it showed me how to tell the linear story. Um, it put me in rooms again with amazing people and I still have relationships with like Mom Shaley. Um, Shelly. Oh, yeah, Shelly's mom. Sorry? 
Yeah, 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 that's my mom. Uh, yeah, I should be in Tawani Yeah, I'm just really, really grateful of the time. Mm. Salam Talisa. Brought to you by the good folks. Sam, Sam. Thank you, man. Stand up. We'll see you at Air Create. Hashtag, she'll be there too.